Okay, so now on to step eight. Um, just go ahead and since it's going to be pretty much all Lua code anyway, um, let's just stick with this one here, make it a little easier. And then we can just keep checking this part of the function just through this. We don't really need to freeze it at that point. We can just freeze it in our Lua thread or in our Lua code. Um, so a few things we're going to want. Um, Go ahead and start on up here and give ourselves a freeze value. So here, basically we'll want this stuff to go ahead and run through the syntax check so that way we can actually check it because um, it won't run the function at that point. does pass a thread uh, argument or variable. Um, so one thing to keep in mind with threads is the way they work in Lua um, is they only execute once. Um, you know, to, to set it up to execute constantly, we'd actually need to put it in a loop. And I really want to say it's pretty much the same way in all languages. Um, if you really want to run it into a loop, you should be on a timer anyway, to some extent. Um, but the other thing to talk about is, um, so with a timer, like it's usually running on the main UI, so this way you can actually interact with some, you know, even the um, address list and, you know, do stuff there. Whereas when you start talking, a, you know, a thread, it needs to be, it, it'll often be on a different thread. It won't be on the, you know, the main UI thread, um, or the main thread. So if we're going to want to, you know, if you've got a trainer and you want to update something, um, you'd either have to synchronize the thread or you'd be better off just running with a timer. But, you know, since we're not updating any labels or doing anything quite like that, we're just going to be checking our address string to see if it, you know, actually works out to be an actual address. And then writing to our value for writing to that address is all we're really going to be doing anyway. So, and this, you know, for something this simple, a thread can work just fine. And especially, you know, because to some extent the way this is going to end up working is it'll just constantly fire, allow everything else on that thread to fire, and then fire again, you know, and just kind of sit in that loop. Um, Okay, so at this point we want to go ahead and start setting up our thread here. Um, one thing we're going to need for our thread is to go ahead and get us a variable. Um, we can probably even do it after this, so that way we we know this pointer is kind of, you know, it's already injected, or not injected, but it's already grabbed that base and we're kind of set up. Um, we might not necessarily have access to that. I don't know, it's all in the list, so yeah. So yeah, so try and get that accessible. Um, but then after that, we go ahead and set a variable. Uh, let's call it run step step eight thread. And then we'll actually go ahead and create our thread. thread um, and then on down here in our disable section one thing we'll want to do is go ahead and set that run step 8 thread to false so this way we cancel the thread This way we'll kill the thread with this and we'll start the thread and make sure we got that set to, fault, to true. Um, the reason for that is like I said this is um, a more of a one shot kind of deal for the thread so we want to make sure we go ahead and check that variable there. I'm going to go ahead and just terminate the thread. This way we can 
know that pretty much the garbage collection is going to happen on it right away. So then in here in our loop, um, we're going to want to go and make sure we do have something so the UI can update and everything can, can run smoothly. So we'll put in the sleep zero down here at the bottom of our while loop. So that way at the end of every loop, it's going to you know, let everything else run and then continue on with the loop. You know, once it hits the end, it'll actually jump back up here, check this, and go back on through the loop. Um, so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and check our address. spacing um, and then plus one eight and that's up to you technically this is the same um, but like I said I like to be explicit in a lot of cases and really make sure I didn't miss something there plus it does make that you know each step stand out a little more um, <coughs> so now I just want to go ahead and write in it here we're going to want to go ahead and grab this address or something Type it all out again. Right, integer. So that, I do believe, pretty much has us ready to go. Close that. Paste that on in our Lua code here. Both of these end up updating again. Um, so our pointer is working and we're now froze to 5,000 and we can continue on to step 9 here. I guess we can go ahead and run that. So that's kind of it for that. 